our favorite co-founder of Brothers Bond. This is Ian Summerhalder. Welcome to the show, Ian. Whoa. What's been going on, man? Ian, how are you, buddy? Uh, dude, thank you for this. I got to have a little sip with you, brother. Well, Absolutely. that's what we're doing first. We're, we're sipping on the OG right now. Oh, yeah. For an 80 proof whiskey, this stuff is so delicious just because of the nuance and all that flavor. Yes. But we're going to kick this up to 85. Actually, and this these are the new labels. This is this juice is actually five years and four months old. I we I just pushed it a little farther. It's delicious, and I think we're just gonna people aren't really even gonna notice, but it's just gonna be a little bit more flavor, um, a little bit more citrus, like yeah. like like really deep citrus. So I think people are gonna love it. It's just sessionable, and like you know, listen, people particularly you know a lot a lot of a lot of people want the higher proof stuff, but that's why there's something for everyone. You know <laughs> that, uh, yeah, there is. <laughs> yes, there is. <laughs> Look at you. You know, has really taken us over the edge. You know, it's like, I mean, dude, it's crazy. Like, you know, we launched because we didn't launch in January. We launched in May uh, when we launched. And May to May was like 91,000 cases of this shit. You know, talking about that launch, I mean, what was it? Uh, what was it in your brain that clicked uh, to, to launch a bourbon line? I was in the wine business because I love wine. I've been able – listen, I've spent a lot of time with some of the best sommeliers walking the planet, fortunately, because I, I spent my formative years in Italy and France. Two of my dearest, dearest brothers are probably in that, like, 10 percentile of the world of, like, those tastes. Food and beverage is – and, and I learned – you know, dude, it's so crazy. So when I was 16, I had a, a contract with Versace. I was the face of Versace with um, – this, uh, this famous supermodel at the time called, called Stella Tennant, who actually was the heir to tenants. But so I went to do this. I, I was the face of Versace. I was 16 years old. And I was living between New York and Milan. I spent a lot of my time with the Versaces, and they were really great. And so obviously, the amazing amount of chefs and sommeliers and, you know, creative directors and designers, and all these people I was, in, I was with all the time allowed me to taste and understand food and beverage at such an amazing level yeah. starting my formative years. And so that carried on where birds of a feather flock together. I was always interested in being around those people. So therefore I've surrounded myself with those people. And, um, and I, I had a, a, a very dear brother of mine. His name is Tex Axile. He, he was a famous pop star. Um, he was in a band called Transvisions Vamp and they were huge for a while. But he's a sommelier and he ran and opened like Ducasse group restaurants and like crazy shit, you know. And I learned from him very early. And then there's another guy named Vajra Stratagos who would, would ran a, um, a company called Fifth Group in uh, Atlanta, Georgia and opened a lot of concepts, like major, crazy, unbelievable stuff. And Vajra was there since the beginning when I started shooting Vampire Diaries. We became best brothers like this and i learned just this this the nuance of food and beverage a lot of it from him and carry that with me every day yeah so vincent han and i were in the wine business because he revolutionized selling bulk wine to china and i'm talking tens and tens and tens and tens and tens of millions of liters but i love wine and we had uh we had the keys to the kingdom of a very specific wine company. I can't mention anymore, but we were about to go to bottle and uh, we were going to launch in China and we didn't just have orders. We had 500 stores uh, we were opening in. We had shipping containers ordered Con like container shipping, containers. <laughs> yeah. but massive. Right. And uh, like eight figure situation, you know, and then uh, Trump changed the, the uh, you know, in this retaliatory trade war with, with Xi Jinping, prices on uh, imports to China, particularly in wine, skyrocketed yep. and destroyed our entire margin. And we were three weeks from signing checks to go into this whole situation. Dude, we would have been so screwed. But we, Paul and I, always wanted to do bourbon. And it just so happened that Vincent had someone will go unnamed, but had something like 350,000 cases of whiskey available. 
that I had access to over the next you know course of years. So to lay down New Phil and then secure the next 10 years of whiskey that I could do, we just said, what are we doing? We shut it down. And literally 24 hours later, we started on building this concept and working on getting whiskey. And through Vincent's incredible um, relationships with one of the biggest alcohol companies in the world, we, we were able to utilize that to get in to get the best whiskey and understand when and how to get contracts done. And uh, it was just, it was baptism by fire, but it was crazy, man. It's common knowledge. I had just gone through this massive financial upheaval because of this company I started that was mm. killing it and then went upside down. So I said, shit, I need to raise money. So <laughs> I, I did a family, friends and family round over a weekend. And the reason was, is that we needed whiskey for a launch date and we were going to lose it. And I raised a million dollars in cash over a weekend with no operating agreement. On Monday morning, uh, we sent the wire and secured the whiskey. And then that was the whiskey that, you know, when we launched on Reserve Bar, we did a pre-sale and we set all these records and we sold that million dollars of whiskey we sold in one day. Holy shit, wow. dude. Wow. So was that your test? Was that like, let's see if, let's see if there's a market for us? It was an amazing litmus test, um, and it was very special. It was a really special moment. But that's how that's how it happened, you know? With it being bourbon, you know, and you, you said you and Paul wanted to do a, a, a bourbon. You always want to do. Was it because of the show that made you want to do bourbon, or was it was it a, a love for bourbon before the show? What was it that, like, said, you know, this is what we're going to do. Let's do whiskey. If you think about it, Stefan and Damon, dude, Damon, like, this guy was such a lush. He was drinking bourbon at seven in the morning. Can't Must say that that hasn't Kentucky. happened at least once <laughs> <laughs> yeah. this year. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, Paul and I, you know, these boys bonded, talking about bonding, we bonded on screen over bourbon. And then Paul and I bonded off screen over bourbon. So, you know, you had these two brothers. And now, you know, you're like you mentioned, you know, we started with this 80 proof because we knew that, like, we, we had this very large millennial female following and mm -hmm. they, you know, it was never about diluting this bourbon category. It was about bringing a new consumer. Brothers Bond uh, straight 80 proof is like the gateway drug. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and it got people sipping and tasting whiskey. Like you said, it's sessionable enough where people are going, hey, I like this. I kind of can't touch it. It's four grains, right? So now, years later, we've got, you know, this, this cash strength is now double gold twice in San Francisco. Yes, it is, buddy. Yes, it is. Finalist for best in class in double gold in New York. But now, so if I get it again next year, it will be a platinum brand. Were you nervous submitting your first spirit to a real competition? Shaking like, in boots. <laughs> yeah. Like, yeah. Just, just like you're worried they're going to come back and be like, oh, look, we're not even going to give it an honorable mention. Um, Dude, you know, when, right. you, when you do that, like, those those competitions can make and break a brand. For sure. Like so, it, had to, it had to be terrifying the first one that you ever sent in. It was terrifying, man. It was terrifying. The two most terrifying components of this whole journey were submitting to San Francisco and New York and then launching uh, Rye. Because Rye, it's a smaller market. But That's right the big dogs play in that space only they do and and so that's why I, you know i spent six months straight just never stopping that the nuance of it and even going you know proof wise it's so funny you end up like literally flat at 95 but you try everything from you know i go a lot of people don't won't blend within more than five percentage points I will go a 0.5 and a 0.25. I just want to know. I just want to see. Yeah. And for whatever reason, I don't know. <clears throat> I got this palette that's really kind of like sensitive. So there is sometimes a difference between, you know, uh, 102 proof and 102.7. I swear there's a difference sometimes. It just might bring out some small hint. Now, mind that's you, right. people may not ever know.
but I sleep at night. And it's funny that this guy ended up at 95 proof because um, it almost ended up at 95.7. And it, and it was just perfect at 95. You're not just tasting and signing a bottle and walking away. Um, you're spending time, just like you said, those proof points, those yeah. little bits of proof points actually matter in whiskey. I just picked up, I have this liter bottle. It was a gift. It was like first time dad gift. It's older now, but it's a bottle of Johnny Walker Blue. Yeah. Which, you know, I went off and did TV and started doing well in life and stuff. And that's what my dad and I we drank a lot of it, especially we were on the road a lot in Europe and there just wasn't a lot of bourbon. So my dad and I have been known to polish off a liter of, 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 of JWB. It happens, you know, man. You know? <laughs> um, but there's something interesting you know, when you read it. It's like, you know, we're, you know, we are firm believers that blending whiskey. I mean, obviously distilling is so important and it's interesting because in America, the, the distillers, because they're ballers, the distillers are the ones that are really celebrated in America. Whereas in Europe, it's interesting. It's the blenders that are most celebrated. Oh, uh, yeah. It's interesting. You know, the blending, it's so funny because, you know, initially, and we still hear it from retailers and, and, and bourbon purists as, as well, like, oh, you know, 80 proof whiskey. But 60,000 cases, you know, 90,000 cases, you can't argue when you turn this 80 proof into an unfiltered this cast strength, there you go. Multiple double yeah, gold, buddy. Finalist for best in class, and you realize, no. okay, it's a platform. 